Well, Jim Heiler of the USGA at the annual meeting this last uh, year, and this is uh, 2010, uh, he said that brown may be the new green. This type of brown isn't the type of brown that he was talking about. This type of brown is the type of brown that occurs after some sort of catastrophic event. And we've had a lot of heat uh, recently. We've had a lot of drought uh, pressure. So this type of brown is something that's a little unique. It happens pretty fast. It's the type of brown that uh, you have to decide what you're going to do with it. Are you going to try to make this area recover? Are you going to use some management practices to try to get the turf back? Or are you going to get the sod cutter out and then just get rid of it? So what we're going to do in this sh short video is talk about how to get this type of ground uh, fixed, if you can, and look a little bit more closely at the plants to see if they are able to recover and what those clues are you might use to determine how much of this might come back and um, how much of it's going to go. And one of the important characteristics, one of the important features is to set the expectations for your golfers and your members. When you have this type of damage, uh, before you make any decisions on what you're going to do, I know you're going to want to get out there and get rid of it sometimes. You just want to replace it, and that's okay. But uh, give it about five days. And I think after five days, when you look at the samples, um, you'll be able to make a judgment on whether or not that turf might recover or whether the knowledge of the uh, damage that's occurred uh, will let you know that with the coming weather conditions, like if it's still going to be hot for a long time, that type of damage probably isn't going to recover and you might have to uh, take some more aggressive action. The key is to take a close look at samples from the damaged area, such as we're looking at here, and try to estimate the percentage of the plants that are totally killed and the ones that look like they'll recover. That plant that I'm touching right there is going to be okay, but there's plants all around it uh, that seem to be completely dead. Uh, if we look at these plants, uh, those, those have no uh, living leaves, and this plant here, that everything is completely killed. Those plants will not recover. There may be only 10% of the plants in the area that are going to survive in this situation. So this is a very severe uh, impact. But if you wait for about five days, just to make sure uh, that when you look back in these samples that there, there aren't enough plants uh, to uh, allow rapid recovery, uh, you'll be able to make a, a firm decision that uh, it's the time to uh, either reseed or sod uh, those damaged areas. And some of these don't look like there's anything alive, but if you look closer, you'll see just a small tip of meristematic tissue growing down uh, coming in the plant and that may recover in that five-day period that we're talking about so it's worth watching uh, these things to make sure that there's nothing alive in there because it's much better if you can get the green reestablished from existing turf than it is to reseed or resod. and in these cases you want to make sure not to uh, apply too much sand to bury these areas because they need every little bit of uh, exposure to light that they can receive well when you encounter a situation like we we showed in the first part of this video uh, it's really difficult to tell what's going to happen. In, in a lot of cases, it's just it's hopeless. But in other cases, you've got a chance to do something to maybe bring the turf back. Uh, things we'd like you to consider is, to, is a product like chlor that contains chlorothalonil to slow down the decomposition of the foliage at the top of the green. When, you, when it's allowed to decompose at a normal rate, it, it's likely to collapse uh, just due to the number of normally occurring fungi that decompose uh, the thatch and mat layer of turf. Once you give them all that food, they chew it all up, they produce a lot of enzymes, and that will actually affect the plants that are trying to recover. So if we slow that down a little bit with a contact fungicide, it seems to make the process go a little bit more smoothly and gets less gummy right at the surface where that organic matter decomposition is taking place. Water levels in the soil is also really critical. It's a catch-22 because you need to have moisture right at the surface of the green where new re roots are forming, but you don't want to have the soil saturated so you don't want to have a lot of black layer so the recommendation we like to um, to give people is to hand water the greens try to keep the moisture around 25 to 30 percent in the top using uh, a 4.7 inch moisture probe from the uh, TDR 300 spectrum technologies moisture meter that gives you uh, a good level of moisture at the top but not too much and you don't want to load the profile up with moisture uh, too heavily because too much water is going to retain heat in the soil profile. So you want to keep as little water in the soil profile as possible and enough moisture at the top so that when new roots are forming they'll be able to peg down and get into the moisture not so dry that they're going to die when they tries to make new roots out from the crown of the plant. And this is plants such as poa and non-stoloniferous plants that, that don't have a lot of stones running underneath uh, the soil. Bank grasses will benefit from this too, the highly dense uh, newer varieties of bank grass. They'll throw the roots out near the top because they don't have any underground. 
uh, structures. Then, if you want to deal a little bit with the color a little bit, maybe get a little bit of stress relief, a uh, product like Chipco Signature will give you a little bit of color and give you a little bit of uh, the stress guard stress relief. That might help you out just a little bit and it ease the, uh, the obvious look of the plants. We also like to recommend that you don't bury the greens in sand. I know the, uh, the temptation to try to make the greens smooth is the first one that comes to mind. Just get the players uh, into a condition where they won't be so mad because there was some damage to the greens. But really if you bury that uh, growing tip like that small leaf that we saw that's just recovering from those uh, damaged areas, it'll, it'll not only heat the surface but it will also cause shading of that what chlorophyll is being produced by those little leaves in the front that are starting to develop. So try to back off on the uh, on the sand top dressing until you get some good recovery. I know it's going to uh, uh, look a little bit rougher, the, the ball is going to bounce a lot, but actually in these conditions uh, when you have a spotty uh, damage, sometimes not putting the sand out uh, makes it easier on the eye. When, once you put sand out in an area where you've got some uh, decline or damage, it really stands out high contrast in the areas where the sand is in the damaged turf areas. So avoid the sand, uh, take the hit and the complaints uh, from the golfers knowing that you're going to be able to get better recovery faster without the sand. Uh, the obvious step, probably the first step that you would try to do, that everybody's heard about and everybody harps on, is to raise your mowing height. Even a little increase, even a 32nd of an inch increase in mowing height is going to give you a little bit of benefit. So you combine those techniques, uh, it, uh, you really, your field staff and, and the moisture management is probably going to be the most critical component uh, to keep enough moisture on there for new, new roots to develop. Not so much moisture that, this, that the system is saturated, not just pounding it with water, just a little bit of moisture uh, more frequently during the day, just like you would uh, a grow-in type of a situation, but not keeping so much moisture uh, in the soil. And hopefully that'll help you uh, re-establish those greens a little bit faster uh, after the five days that we're talking about and you decide that you want to go forward with recovery uh, a little shot of a complete fertilizer like a triple 20 uh, with some micros uh, will help out because now that those roots that are down below there have probably been damaged to the point they're not useful anymore so the new roots are just developing they haven't gotten into the soil they're going to leave a little bit of extra nutrition so about 0.2 pounds of N per thousand per week in that little period will help you out I hope none of you have to experience the catastrophic losses that we shot, showed at the first of this video. Uh, but if it happens, um, take a step back and work methodically through the uh, process to make sure that you can get your greens back as fast as possible.